Today we're going to talk about something you have seen before in courses before calculus, and that is called sequences. Do you remember the kind of sequences you have seen before? The ones with the e's. <coughs> with, the e's. with the sigmas? Yeah, those are actually series, and that's what we're talking about next class. Oh, yeah. But we have arithmetic sequences geometric. and geometric sequences. Geometric sequences were in algebra two, maybe in pre calc. Okay. But we're going to go back to them, we're going to talk about them because they lay the foundation for this next unit that we're going to study. Now what is a sequence? A sequence is just a pattern of numbers that follows a specific way of doing things. So up here in the first box it says they are ordered in a way where this is the first one, the second one, the third one, and so on. What is the first sequence you ever learned in life? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? You learned how to count. Okay, and then after that, you learned how to do your multiples. Two, four, six, eight, ten, when you were at elementary school. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Multiples of two, multiples of five, and all of those different things. But we're going to get a little more involved in that. Sequences are usually given in one of three ways. Explicitly, recursively, or they give you the first few terms. So we're going to look at each type and we're going to talk about what the, the notation means and how to decipher it. Okay, explicitly, what's the opposite of explicit again? Implicit. implicit. So you know what implicit is in terms of differentiation, right? Explicit means they just come right out and tell you. This is how you find the sequence. So right here is an explicit sequence formula, okay? The A sub N means that's the specific term you're looking for. A2 is the second term, A9 is the ninth term, and so on. So this says A N, any term is equal to four plus negative one to the nth power, whichever term number you're on. So they want us to write out the terms of the sequence. So A of N equals, what you do is you plug in one, then two, then three, over and over until you get your pattern down. Okay, if I plug in a 1 for n, what would that clean up to be? It'd be 3. So 3 is my first term. If I plug in a 2 for n, that would be 5, wouldn't it? Negative 1 squared would be 1, plus 4 is 5. What about the third term? It's 3 again, isn't it? Negative 1 cubed is negative. 4 plus negative 1 is 3. What's the fourth term going to be? five dot 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 is it going to continue that pattern yes this is what we call an oscillating sequence does that make sense to you you know what the word oscillate means go back and forth, back and forth. three five three five three five three five it's never going to stop oh, wait, no. I, thought, I thought that was a sub one but those are commas those are commas yes those are commas okay now we have sequence b this one is 3 times n over n plus 1. So let's write out this sequence. b of n is going to be, put a 1 into both of the n's. Top will be what? 3. three. Bottom will be 2, comma. Now plug in 2 for both the n's. That'll be 6. Bottom will be 3. Now, can you do the third term without even looking at the pattern? I mean, looking at the formula. Yes. What's it going to be on top? Nine and four. Nine and four. Very good. Question. Would you not want it to simplify it? Just so you can see the pattern, no, let's just leave it. So what would the next one be? Mm. Over five. five. Dot, dot, dot. Are we good with that? So it's plus one on the bottom, top is Times three. Yes. Or it is plus three in actuality, you're right. Okay. The next one is a little bit weird looking. It deals with n squared and 2 to the n. So c of n would be, oops, I was about to write up braces and I'm not supposed to. Putting a 1 in for both, what's the top going to be? 0, zero over one. 1 minus 1 is 1. 0, 1, comma. Now put in 2. Three. Top is going to be 3. 3, 3 over 3, right? Okay, third term. It's going to be 8 over 2 thirds 8 minus 1 is 7. You're right. And then the fourth term. 
Not quite. N squared, fourth term. 16 minus 1 is 15 on top, right? What is 2 to the fourth? 16 minus 1 is 15 on the bottom. Okay. So, in this case, I am going to simplify just to show you what weird thing is happening. First term is 0. Second term is 1. Third term is 8 over 7. What's the fourth term? 1 again. So that's not, looking at just the numbers, it's not a really clear pattern, especially if they're reduced, right? Okay. Now, the second thing we're going to talk about is what's called a recursive sequence. A recursive sequence, it says here, when a sequence is written recursively, a rule for the first term is usually given. And actually not a rule, but it's just, this is the first term. Here it is. And then they give a rule for the nth term in terms of the n minus 1 term. And the n minus 1 term is the term before it. That's an easy way to think of it. When I say nth term, the tenth term, you're going to base the tenth term on what the ninth term was. You're going to base the twentieth term on what the nineteenth term was. Okay? From there, the sequence can be written. So, before we do these problems, I'm going to go to a sheet of paper and I just want you to look at this sequence. This is a, rec a special recursive sequence. Can you figure out what the pattern is? Not exactly. What? You are almost right. We're gonna. I'm gonna change the way you said it. You said n plus n minus one. It's really. Oh, what am I adding true. together? You're adding the term before it. So, You're, so to, what would the next one be? 5 plus 8 uh, plus 13. It would be 13. And then 13 plus 8. So you're adding not just the one before it, you're adding the 2 before it. That's, that's what I think you were trying to say. So 1 plus 1 gives me the third one. 1 plus 2 gives me the fourth one. 2 plus 3 gives me the fifth one, the next one. You see what I'm doing? What's the next one going to be? 21. 21. The next one? Okay, this is the Fibonacci sequence. Have you ever heard of that? That is a, that is a mathematician's name, Fibonacci. That's a cool name. I was in prison for cheating. Yeah, Fibonacci. Up there. I'm pretty sure he's Italian. Pretty sure. Okay, but the Fibonacci sequence is a recursive sequence. Usually recursive sequences only deal with the number right before it. This one deals with the one before it and the one before that. But you have to define at least the first four terms to know what's going on. Okay? Question? It has something to do with that. It's, it's supposedly everywhere in nature. I'd have to go do some research to find out exactly where. But yes, it's a very common occurrence. Okay? Pardon me? You would have to write a, you could write a recursive sequence for it, but that's, I think, the only way you could do it. Maybe there is. I don't know about it, if there is. Okay, so here is the way a recursive one looks. It says write out the terms of the sequence. A1 is 3, and a, any other term, An, is 2 times the term in front of it. You can always read a sub n minus 1 as the term in front of it, minus 1. All right? So A1 is 3, so we're going to write a 3 and a comma. That's our first term. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and for this first time through write it out. You may need to write it out every time. Sometimes you may be able to do it in your head. So now I'm going to plug in 2 for n because I'm looking for the second term. That would be a2 equals 2a and then 2 minus 1 is 1 minus 1. Take a look at that. Do you all see how I got that? Just the n's turned into both into 2's. So, to get the second term, I need to do 2 times the first term minus 1. So what is 2 times the first term minus 1 going to be? 5. So 5 is the next term, comma. 2 times 3 minus 1. Now to do the third term, a3, 2, a2 minus 1. Yes? So we like to get the pi and count, which is 
Yeah, you can just start seeing the pattern after that. So two times the one before it, the one you just wrote down, minus one, that's nine. Agreed? Okay, so now if you've got the pattern in your head, you don't need to write down A4. It'd be two times this, minus one, which is what? 17. Yes, and 33. Dot, dot, dot. You got it? How, how do you know when you it? It goes on forever. Do at least four. Infinite. Okay, the next one says B1 is negative one, so negative one comma. Who can decipher what the next one is trying to tell me? What am I supposed to do with the term I just wrote down? Square, square. square it and add one. So if I square it this and add one, what do I get? Two. two. So now I take and square this and add one and I get five. And then I square this and add one and I get 26, dot, dot, dot. Very good, y'all are catching on quick. Okay, we're not gonna do C in the interest of time. We're gonna jump down to the next part because the next part is the one that's the most challenging. When the terms are given, when they write it out for you and you have to come up with the rule, it's a little bit harder, okay? Because there is no hard and fast way to do it for everything, okay? You usually have to recognize patterns of numbers. Some of them are difficult, but usually on the AP exam, you will only have to do obvious ones. They're not gonna give you some real obscure kind of pattern like that one, I mean zero, one, eight, seven, one. That's just too weird. Okay, so now we're trying to write the formula so tell me what you see in this pattern here. What's happening from term to term? Adding six. They are adding six every time. Do you all agree with that? Yes. Okay. I have found that when you're writing your formula, so we write braces an equals. Now braces are not easy to write. You can just write squiggly lines if you can't draw the little braces mm -hmm. thing. It took me a long time to get the braces. I drew squiggle lines all through high school. Okay. The best way to do this, I think, okay, is think about the fact that when you add a number every time to get from one term to the next, it's kind of like slope. Remember when you did T tables and you did your little bird beaks and you said plus six on this side and plus one on this side, plus six and plus one, and you found your slope? It's kind of like a slope because arithmetic sequences, which is what this is, are linear. So your six, what you're adding every time is like your slope. So you start out by writing 6n, okay? Whatever you're adding every time, times n, and now ask yourself, if I plug in one to this, how would I have to modify it to get four? Subtract. I would have to subtract two. Yes, ma'am? So is it like delta x times n? Yes, yes. It is like delta x times n. Y'all see how that works? Yeah. See if it works for the second term. Plug in, the second term is 10. So if you put a two in for n and subtract two, are you gonna get 10? No. Yes, no. yes. So like when you said that it's basically delta x, like delta x times n, uh -huh. they, are you saying that a equals delta x? Not necessarily, no, a is not delta x. A is, a represents a sequence. A is never by itself. It's either A1, A2, A3, or A4. It's the term number. Yes, sir? So you couldn't write A with N minus 1 plus 6? You could. You could write it recursively, but I want to write it this way because you've got to learn how to recognize it. But yes, you can. You, that is true. You could say that A1 is 4 and A N equals A N minus 1 plus 6. That's an easy way to write it. Yes. Okay, now let's do letter B. Now remember we're looking for the explicit formula because it's written this way. Explicit uh, recursive formulas are written just as just A1 and AN without the braces. That's how you know. So what do you notice about this sequence that this sequence didn't do? Negative, Negative to positive. So the way to write that down is the same no matter what the sequence pattern is. And the way you write it is a negative one to the power of either n or n plus 1 depending on the sign of the first term. Okay? So let's assume at first it's just n and test it. Is our first term negative or positive? Negative. 
Negative. negative. If I plug a 1 in here, am I going to get a negative answer? Yes. Yes. So that's what I want. If I wanted a positive answer, I'd have to put in n plus 1. So the first term would actually be raised to the second power, and it would turn it positive. Does that make sense? OK. So now, pretend like it's all positive. What pattern do you see? Negative, positive. Well, no, forget about the negative positive for now. That's been taken care of. What are they adding here? Plus three. three. What about here? Five and seven. And seven. Hmm. So could you think you could tell me what the next one is? Plus nine. Which should be what number? Twenty-five. 25. What are we going to say? Are we talking about like as the positives? As positives, oh. yes. As positives. What's going on? Ariel, do you think you know? Oh, I thought the pattern was like n squared. It is n squared. It is n squared is the pattern. Do you notice those are all the perfect squares? Taking off the negatives, they are the perfect squares. 1, 4, 9, 16. So what we do is we do <coughs> n squared. Okay? So that is the pattern of the squares. So the, uh, the explicit formula is negative 1 to the n times n squared. Okay? Letter C. Once again, it's negative, positive, negative, positive. So we start out by doing the braces a, n equals the new braces and we do the negative 1 to the same power of n because the first term is negative again. So is it any time there's negative terms or any time there's negative They're alternating terms. Any time they're alternating terms negative you have to do the negative, the negative 1. Negative one to the n. Mm -hmm. Or to the n plus 1 if the first term is positive. So if it's positive you do n plus 1. Right. Negative Correct. Okay. Does anybody know what the pattern of 1, 2, 6, 24 is? N what? N times N minus 1? Almost. But 24 is not. Oh, N minus 1 times N minus 2. It's not 6 times 2. Not quite. Okay. Pretend like they're all positives. What are you multiplying by here? 2. What are you multiplying by here? 3. What are you multiplying by here? 4. What is that when you multiply by 4 times 3 times 2? Oh, times it's that thing that we just talked about. What's that called? Factorial. It's factorial. This is n factorial. Okay. The fourth term is 4 factorial. The third term is 3 factorial. Okay. So I want to jump to the bottom of the page and write you a little helpful hint cheat sheet. Because these two patterns, if you don't know them just from sight, it helps to just have them to look at. n squared is 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on. Okay? And factorial is 1, 2, 6, 24, and so on. Okay? It's nice to have those handy because what if the pattern was 2, 5, 10, 17? <coughs> How does that compare to one of those two patterns? 2, 5, 10, and 17. It's the squared one plus one. So if you can see, oh, if I just subtract one from all the terms, I have the squares, then you know to write n squared plus one. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So be looking for the squares, be looking for the factorials as you go through this. All right, let's go to letter D. Fractions are actually rather easy because what you do is you just find a pattern for the top and a pattern for the bottom. Okay. So this would be A of n equals, my squiggles still aren't that good, draw your fraction bar. What is happening on top? Multiply, Multiply by, two. by 2. Multiply by 2, which means it's going to be not exactly 2n, that's 2 adding, that's adding 2 every time. Oh. We talked about that before. It's 2 n to the two. power of n, because the first term is 2 to the first, the second term is 2 squared, the third term is 2 to the third. Fourth term is 2 to the fourth. Okay? So anytime it's multiplying by something, it's that number to the n power, and then you may have to adjust the power a little bit. Okay? Now what about the bottom? What's happening on the bottom? We're adding 2. So we're going to do it like we did letter A. So we know it's going to be 2n, because that's adding 2. But how do you modify that to get the first term to be 1? Not minus 2. Minus 1. 
There it is. 2 to the n over 2n minus 1. There's the pattern. You see how it's a lot of guess and check and trial and error for these kind of things? All right. We're going to stop with letter E. After we do letter E, I mean. A of n equals braces fraction bar. Okay. It may help sometimes if it's kind of a weird looking one to above the term write the term number and realize that when you write the sequence that number will become n. So Stephen, what do you think? So n to the nth root? N to the nth root, or the nth root of n? What do you think? Is the first term the first yeah. root of one? Yeah. Or you could, I had somebody last period say it was n to the power. Pardon the interruption. I need David Ochoa to check out, please. OK, thank you. Thank you. OK. It could be written as n to the power of 1 over n. Because remember that 1 half is a square root, 1 third is a cube root, 1 fourth is a fourth root. Okay, So I'm just going to do it the way that I think is the easiest, which is the nth root of n. Right? Because aren't those two numbers the same as the problem number? Okay. What's happening on the bottom? Adding 1. Adding one. So that means 1n. 1 times n, because you're adding 1. So what do I need to modify this with to get the first term to be a 2? Plus 1. There you go. There it is. No, you don't. You don't have to write the 1 in front of the n if you can see it. All right. We may want to go ahead and add another. Well, no. That's going to make it too complicated. These are the two that might come in handy as you work. So we may refer back to those later. Okay? Questions on this side of the page before we flip it over? All right. Let's flip it over. Okay, we're going to do just a couple of these. And I think these are actually a little bit easier. Now we're going to write a recursive rule. It tells me to give me a recursive rule. So remember, recursive rules have two parts. The A1 part and the AN part. So what is the first term? 1. A1 equals 1. That's the first part. Now, how is this, how is the second term related to the first term? It's the first term multiplied by 2. If you can just say it in a sentence, then you can translate it to the math. This is like the second term is equal to the first term, a n minus 1, times 2, you said? So I'm just going to put a 2 in front of it, 2a to the n minus 1. Now. Earlier, when you added something, you put that number times n. That was for the explicit. But this one, you would actually write that number plus 1. This is much more logical in that regard. OK, let's try the next one. a1, a n. a1 is 1 again. Ooh, what's going on up here? What are we doing here? Plus 1, plus 2, plus, two, plus 3. OK. So. We take, we're adding every time, so it's going to be the previous term plus a number? No. Plus n. Let's check it if it's plus n. Okay. a2 equals a1 plus 2. Is that right? No. Okay, let's write it. Let's write it in regular numbers. A2 equals A1 plus 1, right? A3 equals A2 plus 2. Agreed? Mm -hmm. So what is A n oh, equal? N minus, n minus 1 plus n minus 1. This subscript and this number here are the same. So if this is n minus 1, so is this. A2 equals A1 plus 1. This matches this. So this has to match this. OK? Now we're not going to do the last one just for the sake of time. All right, now we're going to go on to the, to the real heart of what this is all about. This whole unit is all about convergence and divergence. Okay, 
you are going to be given a group of problems to do. You are going to have to sort them by the way they look, and then you're going to have to determine based on the kind of problem it is, determine whether it's convergent or divergent. So let's do a little bit of a study about what exactly convergent and divergent means. We've talked about it in improper integrals. We're going to talk a little bit more about it now. We're interested in sequences whose term approach a limiting value. In other words, as the limit as n approaches infinity equals a number. Not infinity, not DNE, it equals a number. If your limit equals a number, it converges. This sequence, 1 over 2 to the n, converges to 0 because the limit as n approaches infinity of this is 0. Remember we talked about when you have infinity and you plug it in, if you get a number over infinity in limit land, that equals 0. Do you remember that? A number over infinity is zero. A sequence that has no limit or gets infin infinitely bigger oscillates is said to diverge. So if the limit, if you do the limit and you end up with infinity or you end up with DNE, then it's a diverge situation. Okay? So let's take a look at number five. Now these three sequences on number five are the same ones we had in number one. The same formulas. So it's a lot easier to see, I think, sometimes if you just look at the pattern. 5a, flip back over to the front, look at 1a. When we wrote it out, we got 3, 5, 3, 5, blah, 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 blah. Do you believe that's going to converge? No. No. It's just going to continue to oscillate. That's a DNE situation. So, it diverges because it oscillates. That one is going to diverge because it oscillates. Now, you really can't tell by looking at the formula. You'd have to plug in a few numbers to see the pattern. Okay? However, sometimes the formula helps. Sometimes the pattern helps. The pattern helped on that one. No, seeing the 3535, five, that was pretty obvious it's going to diverge. This one, if you look at the pattern, 3 over 2, 6 over 3, 9 over 4, 12 over 5, not real easy to tell. Okay, but what we do is we come back over here and we actually take the limit as n approaches infinity and because it's a quotient, we can do this. We did this already this year. Okay, the first way we learned way back in the fall was dividing by the highest power of x. But then, after we learned derivatives, we learned a new way. L'Hopital's rule. We're going to be using L'Hopital's a lot in this unit. Okay. Right now is infinity over infinity, so we keep going and take the derivative individually of the top and bottom. What's the derivative of the top? Three. Three. What's the derivative of the bottom? One. One. So that limit is going to be three. Since I got an answer, a number answer, this one converges. Now it doesn't necessarily converge to three, but it does converge. Okay. Now, look at the last one. That's that weird one. Let's go look over here. It went 0, 1, 8 sevenths, 1. I have no clue whether that converges or diverges just by looking at the pattern. So we're going to look at the formula. Okay? So we're going to do the same thing we just did. The limit as n approaches infinity of n squared minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, right now, that is infinity over infinity. So that means I'm going to take the derivative top and bottom. What's the derivative of the top? 2n. 2n. What's the derivative of the... Now, we haven't done this derivative in a while. N to n no, it doesn't work n to the n minus 1. This is like an e to the x. So it is a copy-paste times the natural log of the base. We haven't done this in a long time. Oh, this is a a to the n, a to the x, ln of a is what what it was. Okay, ln of two is a number, so just keep that in mind in a minute. The minus one, of course, its derivative is zero, so we don't worry about it. So right now, if I plug infinity in, I'm still going to have infinity over infinity. So I need to do it again. So what's the derivative of the top? Two. Just two. Okay, now I know I'm done. Now ln of two is a number, so it's going to just sit there because it's multiplied to the problem. And once again, the derivative of 2 to the n is 2 to the n times the ln of 2. So 2 plus 
So now if I take the limit, I'm going to end up with 2 over infinity because I still have an n on the bottom. Yes? What happens to the first two n that you took in the second part? Like I basically swap these two guys' places. Okay? I copied the ln of 2 down. Then I took the derivative of this, which is this. So that's why there's another one of them right there. Okay? So this limit is going to be 2 over infinity, which is approaching 0. And because I got an answer, this one converges. This one converges. Questions? Yes? If we're taking the limit of the problem that oscillates, so how's that going to look? Are you going to get, um, are you not going to get a definite number? You're not going to get a definite number because it's going to keep jumping back and forth 3 to 5 to 3 to 5. Converging means it's coming towards something, and this one's never going to do it. Okay? Yes? What about, like, like when we did the sandwich there, it looked like the one that went between them was oscillating, but almost... It wasn't, o it wasn't a true oscillation. A true oscillation always goes to the same height and low point. Oh. Like sine. As you go out to infinity for sine, it's never going to converge because it just keeps going up and down and up and down and negative 1 and 1. Okay? okay? See the difference? These were kind of wiggly, and then they came together, and then they wiggled out. They did come together. Okay. Now. I love bells. No, I don't. Okay. The next thing, we have a few more vocabulary words to learn, and then we're going to be done. First of all, we're going to talk about what's called a monotonic sequence. Okay. What does the word monotonic sound like? Monotone. That's a person who talks like this all the time and they're really boring. Or monotonous. Doing something. What does monotonous mean? Same thing. Same thing. Over and over and over again. But <coughs> Excuse me. A monotonic sequence is a sequence whose terms are either non-increasing or non-decreasing. Okay? So basically that means they're always going up. This is a very loose definition. They're either always going up or always going down, but they can stay the same two terms side by side. Okay? So it either continues to rise or it levels off and then rises again, or it <coughs> constantly falls. That's what monotonic means. So this one was the 3535. Three, is that monotonic? Is it always going up or always going down? No. This one was the 3 over 2, 6 over 3, 9 over 4, 12 over 5. Well, let's see. 3 over 2 is 1.5, right? 6 over 3 is 2. 9 over 4 is 2.25. And this is 2.4. So are these continually going up? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is monotonic. Monotonic. Okay, the last one. The pattern was 0, 1, 8 sevenths, 1. Monotonic, yes or no? No. No, because it goes up and then down again. Okay, last thing we're going to talk about is bounding. A sequence is bounded from above if there is a number m greater than every term in the sequence. In other words, there's an upper limit, then it's bounded on top. If there is a lower limit, it's called bounded from below. There's a number n smaller than every term in the sequence. It will never go below a certain threshold. Okay? Sometimes acting like an asymptote. Now, please star, box in, whatever you want to do, the last sentence here. If a sequence is bounded and monotonic, it will converge. So even if you don't know what the formula is, if you can look at the graph and see it that it's bounded, and monotonic, it will definitely converge. Okay? So, let's take a look at number seven, letter A. Is this thing monotonic? Always going up or always going down? Yes. yes. So it is monotonic. Is it bounded? Yes. The answer is yes, because it's got that dotted line up there showing that's the upper threshold. Okay. Now, because it is both, that means monotonic plus bounded equals convergent, definitely. It is definitely going to be convergent. Okay? It has to be both in order to converge. 
B, is B monotonic? No. No, it's not always going up or down. Is it bounded? Actually, yes it is because no dot is higher than here. Do you see that? So it is bounded, but it is not monotonic. Wait, how do you know it's bounded? There is a point at which no dots, there's not, there might be a line there, there might not be. But there are no dots above that point where I just drew it in, therefore it's bounded. Okay? Right, letter C. Monotonic? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. This one is definitely monotonic. Always going up. Is it bounded? No. No. Okay. That's definitely going up to infinity. This side, I don't know. And if you don't know, you cannot say for sure that it is. Whoops. I'm writing yes and no. I should be writing <laughs> monotonic. But not bounded. That's what I should be writing. Sorry. <clears throat> what about letter D? Monotonic? No. 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 Bounded? No. no. So this is neither. So it's divergent. It is divergent. Well, yes. It is definitely divergent just by the way it looks. The, the dots are going to just keep oscillating farther and farther apart, so it's definitely divergent. So then neither no. is it only going to be divergent? Not necessarily. The only thing you can guarantee is that if it's monotonic and it's bounded, it's going to be convergent. But if it's divergent, it's always going to be I will have to look that one up, but I think you're right. I think you're right. Okay, any other questions? Yes, sir? So for B and C, they're just not convergent? Correct, because it has to be both in order to be convergent. Okay, so do we, do we say that or do we just ignore it? We just ignore it. Actually, I take that back. This one may be convergent, but we don't know for sure. This statement right here, if it's bounded and monotonic, you're guaranteed convergence. If it's one or the other, it might, but we don't know for sure. Is there a way for and we will find out, yeah, that's what we're doing over the next two weeks. Okay? I wanted to clarify that. Anything else? Awesome. 